Hey guys, it's Chili here. Welcome back to Hardware 3D Tutorial 4. In the last video, we created our message loop and we created a Windows procedure to handle our first message, which was the WM close message. And this allowed us to respond to the close message by uh, basically signaling our message loop here that we want to terminate the program. So that will cause it to exit the message loop and return from our entry point, WinMain. So, that's all well and good. Now, I'm sure there's a lot of things that you're wondering about at this point. You might be wondering, well, if you got a switch here, you've only got one case, why are you even bothering with a switch? Why not just use an if statement? And that the answer to that is, you know, pretty plain to see, is that we anticipate that we are going to be handling many more different types of messages. So that begs the question, well, what are all these different messages? How do we know what messages there are and which ones we should handle? The answer, well, the short answer to that is I'm going to tell you in this series. But the long answer, the, the answer to the question of how would you find out on your own I would like to tell you that the answer to that question is just look it up on MSDN. But if you look up um, the reference for Windows, so you go to Windows here, and you go Window Reference, and you go Window Messages, <laughs> there's not, it's not a huge list of messages here that they give you in MSDN. So MSDN actually has pages for most of the messages that you need to handle, but they don't have a list of messages, which I find incredibly retarded. You could Google list of Windows messages, you will find pages that are not MSDN. This one is useless. Uh, so the best list of Windows messages I've found is here on the WineHQ uh, page. And this is a pretty exhaustive list. It doesn't have all of them, but it has most of them. It's You're going to say, I don't know, maybe like around a thousand messages here altogether. Um, so that's a good list to see what messages there are. But even knowing that, you don't know which ones are common, which ones are uncommon, uh, and at what times they are all sent. So if you wanted to experiment on your own, you could create, uh, you could write some code that basically logs all the messages as they come into the Windows procedure. And that's what I've done here. So I've created a little class here. I'm not going to go into detail about it. It's just basic C++. If you're interested, you can look at it yourself. It's a message map and it just uses unordered map to map Windows message IDs to a string, which is going to be the name of the message. And you can see in here, I've just created a big, this is putting them all into the map. I just use a simple little macro here. It takes a parameter, that's the, the symbol for the message, and it just outputs in um, curly braces here, the message, and then the string of the message. This, for macros, this pound sign here, the hashtag, this turns it into a string literal. So doing that will give me a map but from uh, message IDs to the string of the message, and then I just implemented an operator here, that will, uh, you give it a message, and you give it L param and W param, and it will format that very nicely and return a st formatted string. And then in our window proc here, I just create a static Windows message map, and for every message that we receive, I'm gonna output debug string. I'm going to uh, get that pretty printed uh, formatted message, convert that to a C string, and output that to the debug window here. It's gonna look something like this. So let's test this out and see what we get. Should be interesting, right? So here's our window, normal. And let's not, let's not do anything with the window yet. Let's just look at the output. So right now we can see that there's a bunch of messages we get even before we do anything with our window. Let me see, okay, here's a start here. So we get get min max info, NC create, NC calc size, Windows message create. So here we can see we're getting a bunch of messages to do with the creation of a window, which makes sense. It's the beginning, this is the birth of our window. These are the kind of messages we would expect at the beginning. Windows position changing, Windows position changing, activate app, NC activate, get icon, all this weird stuff, paint, all this dumb bullshit. Uh, activate, okay, good. So these are messages you will expect every time you create a window. And uh, what can we say here? Well, first off, L param and W param, they are specific to the type of message. So you can't really tell what it is unless you know uh, the format of a, sp a p specific message. A specific message. Uh, so that's one thing to note. Second thing, NC stands for non-client. Uh, so what that means, let me see if I can bring my window up here, yeah. Uh, 
let's let's scroll down to the bottom of the messages here. Bring this up. Ah, see when we when I put this window to the foreground, you saw a bunch of messages came up here. Uh, now, this is the NC region. Non-client the client region is all the stuff in here. The non-client region is all the stuff around here, like the, the title bar um, and the close button. This is all non-client stuff. The border, non-client. So if I look at my messages now, and I got a whole bunch of them because I was mousing over my window, you'll see a whole bunch of NC messages, NC hit test. Uh, well, mostly just N NC hit test because I was moving my mouse over the NC portion, NC activate, etc., etc. So, yeah, first thing, this is the non-client region, this is the client region. Uh, and let's just let's start this over again, because it'll look better. So, yeah, you can see when I'm moving my mouse here, lots of messages, mouse move, set cursor, all that good stuff. Well, I don't know why I get NC hit test. Um, even though I'm not in the NC region, but apparently you get NC hit test message for any kind of mouse movement, maybe, I don't know. Uh, if I start to move the window, you're gonna see some different kinds of messages. WM move, windows position changed, moving, move, all that good stuff. And you can see the numbers for the L param are also changing. You can probably imagine what those numbers are. Those are probably representative of the position of the mouse on the screen, or not the mouse of the window. So you could use this to examine all the different kinds of messages you get. Like for example, let's see, I want to I want to learn how to handle keyboard input. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put my uh, my window up to the foreground so it's focused, and then I'm gonna hit some keys on the keyboard. And you can see here we get a whole bunch of different keys. We get key down. We get Windows message car. We get key up. So those are the three kinds of messages you can expect to get when you're pressing the keyboard. Now I'm only going to press the F key. F, 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 F. Now I'm going to press the D key. Look at the W param there. Ah, uh, no. Okay, that was bad. Let's try this again. Experiment aborted. F, 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 F. Pay respects. Now D, 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 D. And you can see the W param has changed from 46 to 44. So we can see here that the W param probably stores the information about what key is being pressed. Good information, right? All right, now let's set ourselves a task. We want to handle the WM um, key down event or the message, WM key down. So how do we go about that? Well, first of all, we need to understand what all of that bullshit means, all of the... Uh, the, the, the L param and the W param. So we can go WM underscore key down. And that will get us to the documentation for that message. And it tells you the parameters, W param. So that's the virtual key code of the non-system key. And L param is a whole bunch of different bullshit uh, telling you about information about the status when that key was pressed. So we see here the lower 16 bits give us the repeat count. So if someone held down the button and they're getting auto repeat uh, key down messages, this will tell you the actual number of uh, auto repeat messages that you're getting. The next few bits give us the scan code, which is apparently it's a value that depends on the uh, equipment manufacturer. So it's a hardware dependent value for the key code. Uh, and then we get some information, like some flags here, tells us whether the key is an extended key. These ones, don't touch them, they don't mean anything to you. Context code, which is always zero. Transition sta state, which is always zero, apparently. And the previous key state will be one if the key was down before the message was sent, or zero if the key was up before the message was sent. So, for these guys, for the most part, don't really care about them too much, although you might care about this auto-repeat thing, especially in games. But we won't worry about it right now. What we're mostly interested in is the W param, because that gives us the virtual key code of the non-system key. And here we get virtual key codes. So, here we get virtual codes for all of the keys that we can get messages for. So here we get VK, execute, print, snapshot, insert, um, control, clear, tab, all those buttons have a, a symbol defined for them. And here's the value of that symbol. And we can use these to, we can compare these against W param to figure out what key was actually being pressed. Now for the alphanumeric keys, 
there is actually no VK code for these ones. And the reason why is because the code is just the ASCII value of the character. So all you have to do is you put in single quotes, capital C, and that is the virtual key code for the C key. You'll see in a second. Ha, you'll see in a second. So we're gonna handle WM key down. So there it is. And what we wanna do is if the key being pressed is an F, so if W param param is equal to capital F character literal, then uh, let's just change the uh, the name of the window because we do, we 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 can't draw anything on the screen. Uh, I mean, we could. We'd have to use GDI, and I don't. I don't want to go into GDI because we're not going to be using it, right? We're going to be using Direct 3D to draw. So there's no point in me teaching you GDI. So we're we're just going to change the name of the window because that's an easy way to get feedback on our if we've properly handled our message. Now, I don't rightly know how to do this because I've never done it before, really. How to change window title win API. This is how you Google shit. How do I change... How can I change in this Windows title? Uh, that's set window text A. That seems about right. Let's try that. All right. I'm not even going to look at the page because I'm a, I'm a maverick. Set window text. And it says we need a handle to the window. And it says we need a string. So let's go with uh, respects. And that's it. And then we're going to break. So we'll also do default window procedure handling. And I don't think default window procedure does much for keyboard presses, but uh, we'll, we'll let it do its thing anyways, just in case. So, run this guy. We're getting messages. Let's press F. And we just changed the Windows text to respects. Beautiful. We've handled our first keyboard input message. And we can use the same idea to handle the Windows key up message. So now on the key down, we change it to respects. And on the key up, we change it to danger field. So what I expect to be happening here is as long as I'm holding F, it will be respects. But then when I release F, it'll go to danger field. And if I press it down, it's respect. Release, danger field. Respect, danger field. Respect, no respect. Respect, no respect. Ah, there you go. Beautiful. You get the idea. So that's how you handle key down and key up messages. But I think this is where I'm going to cut it off for today. In the next video, we're going to look at WM car and its relation to the translate message call. And we're going to look at handling mouse messages. But until then, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you soon with some more hardware 3D.